Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to the second lesson in Week 12. We're still looking at work, energy, and power. In the next few slides, we're going to be looking at some work and energy examples. These will give you some idea of how you can do the work and energy examples, and then you must go and practice, 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 and then do the questions and assessments. So let's get started. Right, so let's just look at this example. We have a pendulum of mass 300 grams is attached to a ceiling. It is pulled up to point A at which is at a height of 30 centimeters from the equilibrium position. And it says calculate the speed of the pendulum when it reaches point B. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Here it is connected to the ceiling. At this point, it is point A, which is at a height of 30 centimeters above the rest point, it then swings down to point B, and they want to know what is the velocity down here. So before we carry on, we need to do a couple of things. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert our mass, and the second thing is our height, because these are not SI units. So the mass has to be in kilograms, so therefore the mass now is going to be 0.3 three kilograms because there's a thousand grams in a kilogram and the height funny enough is also going to be 0 0.3 meters because there are 100 centimeters in a meter and grade 12 please as you're reading these questions and highlighting the information that you've gotten given and what you need to do please make sure that you convert immediately so you don't make a mistake by doing the whole problem with the incorrect units now it says it's highlight this calculate the speed of the pendulum when it reaches point B. So point B is at the bottom of its swing. You can see that it starts swinging back up to point C after point B. So let's use the conservation of mechanical energy. They say there are no non-conservative forces. That means the mechanical energy is conserved, which is great. So we know that Emec, the total mechanical energy, at A has to equal Emec at B which means the potential energy at A plus the kinetic energy at A has to equal the potential energy at B plus the mechanical energy, sorry, mechanical energy, the kinetic energy at B. Right, so now let's think about that. So therefore we've got at A, which we're going to do in green, we've got MGH plus a half MV squared is equal to, and let's do this one in blue, which is the point at B, we've got MGH plus a half MV squared. Now, obviously, when you do these questions and you've been doing them for a while, you can immediately cross out bits that don't apply. But grade 12s, you need to always write down either this line here, that the total mechanical energy at one point equals the total mechanical energy, or this line here, Okay, because there is a mark allocated for you showing that you know the conservation of mechanical energy is being applied here. Okay, now at point A, it has been raised to point A and then it's been dropped. So there is no initial velocity at point A. The initial velocity is zero. So therefore, this V here, the velocity, the green velocity here on the left hand side is zero. So therefore, the whole of the kinetic energy is zero. So we've got MGH on the left hand side equals, and on the right hand side, you can see that now. B is at the bottom of the swing, so therefore it is at zero height. Therefore this H, the blue H on the right, is zero, so there is no potential energy. So MGH is equal to a half MV squared. Now a lot of students make the mistake of writing down that line, that MGH equals a half MV squared. And although it's true for this example, if you just write this down, you are showing that you don't actually know the conservation of mechanical energy and you will lose marks. So please make sure you write down either this line or that line to show that you know that you're using the conservation of mechanical energy. Now, there's another trick I want to show you. They gave us the mass of the object is 0.3 kg. So we can substitute it in. But a lot of the sums, they don't actually give you the mass. And then students freak. So I want you to notice something. Do you agree that this is the mass of the sphere or the pendulum 
and this is the mass of the pendulum and the masses don't change and therefore we can actually take them out as common factor and we can cancel so therefore we have the equation gh is equal to a half v squared and now at this point i could substitute in but i want to show you something else and this is that we can now solve for v so we can take the half across so we go 2dh is equal to v squared and then making v subject to the formula on the left hand side v is equal to the square root of 2gh obviously plus or minus but in this case it's going to be positive so it's square root 2gh and the reason i want to show you this is because they often ask you to derive a formula using this example to show that the velocity of the object at the bottom is independent of its mass. And this year, what I've done now, shows you the velocity of the object as it falls is independent of its mass. So this is what you would do in a theoretical question. Okay, but now they actually want us to work out the speed. So we just have to fill in the numbers. It's square root of two times nine comma eight times the height and the height that it goes through is 0, 0,3 meters so it's 0, 0,3 and we pop that in our calculator and we go square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.3 close brackets equals 2 times 9.8 times 0.3 equals square root answer and it becomes 2.42 2, 2,42 meters per second and luckily for us they've asked us to calculate the speed and the speed is a scalar so no direction is required right so that's our first example so you learned a lot in this example you learned about the fact that you need to use the conservation of mechanical energy you learned that you need to write this out you've learned that you can if it only consists of one object which doesn't change in mass you can cancel the masses and therefore derive an equation that shows that the velocity of the object is independent of its mass and then we actually worked out the speed please make sure you understand this go do this example by yourselves first and then come through it again and make sure you understand right let's look at the next example right let's look at this next example a 60 kilogram skier with initial speed of 12 meters per second coasts up a 2.5 meter high rise as shown in the figure find her final speed at the top so they want this final speed at the top given that the coefficient of friction between her skis and the snow is 0, 0, 8. this says hint find the distance traveled up the incline now before you freak grade 12s realize that this is quite a technical question it's not an easy question so let's take it in baby steps okay first of all we know that we have a 60 kilogram skier it has an, she has an initial speed of 12 meters per second and she coasts up the 2.5 which means there's no other force acting on her other than the force of friction but the force of gravity she coasts up here to get up to a height of 2.5 meters with still some velocity okay so therefore we're going to be using the conservation of mechanical energy we're going to go EP plus EK is equal to EP plus EK okay and this is at the top I mean the bottom and this is at the top plus the work done against friction in other words she's taken all the energy she has here and she is converting it to mechanical energy and she obviously has to overcome the force of friction as well so she has to do work done against friction right so let's look at the bottom values first because she has no height there's no potential energy so she just has kinetic energy so kinetic energy is a half mv squared which is a half times her mass of 60 kgs times her initial velocity of 12 squared which becomes let's work it out it's 30 times 144 which becomes 
4,320 joules. So what that means is this gear has got 4,320 joules to overcome the force of friction, to do work against the force of friction, to get up to a height of 2.5 meters and still have some velocity. So she's going to get up to the height, so she's gonna have mass times gravity times height, plus she's gonna have some kinetic energy, so half mv squared, plus the work done against the force of friction. So WF. Okay, but now let's talk about this work done against the force of friction because that there is a little bit of a tricky calculation. So we know that work done is equal to F delta X cos theta. But this is the work done against the force of friction. So this is the force of friction. That is the displacement, the, the how fast the force of friction has occurred. And cos theta, because she's going to be traveling parallel to the surface, is going to be the cos of zero, which is one. So we can ignore that. That's just a one. Okay. Right. So now we need to work, look at these two. And they even gave you the hint. They said, find the distance traveled up the incline. So they gave you that hint. So let's look at the drawing. Do you agree that that actually there is a triangle? Okay, that's a triangle. So that there is a triangle. This is 2.5 meters. And this is an angle of 35 degrees. So therefore, if I want this distance here, which is the distance that she basically coasted up, we would be looking at the hypotenuse. And this is the opposite side. So now if we look at Sokotoa, yes, my favorite trig ratios, Sokotoa, we've got the opposite. We want the hypotenuse, so we're going to use sine. So we're going to say sine of 35 degrees equals the opposite, which is 2,5 over the hypotenuse. Therefore, the length, this distance, delta x, is going to be, I need space, let's write it over here. Delta x is going to be equal to 2,5 over sine of 35 degrees. And we pop that in our calculator, we got 2.5 divided by sine of 35 degrees. And great tools, please make sure your calculator is on degrees and not on radians or anything silly because otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. So 2.5 divided by sine of 35 is going to be 4.36. So the displacement is 4,36 meters. Okay, so that's the displacement that the force is acting over. 2.5 divided by sine is 35. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now we've worked out delta x. Now we need to work out the force of friction, this force of friction. And for that, we need to draw a free body diagram. Why? I'll show you in a second. So here is a free body diagram. And there's our little skier. And do you agree there's the force of gravity, which is acting on her straight into the ground? Sorry for being not perfectly down. And that there is the normal force. And why am I interested in normal force? Well, because the force of friction, actually I'm gonna write it out here. This is equal to the mass, which is 60, times the gravity, which is 9,8, times the height of 2,5, plus a half times by 60, times the velocity squared that we're trying to find out, plus the force of friction times the displacement of 4,36. And this force of friction is equal to mu k fn. So we need the normal force. So let's go back to our free body diagram. We know that this is the force of gravity and it can be broken up into a vertical component and a horizontal component. And this vertical component is equal to the normal force. So this F perpendicular, 
FG perpendicular is equal to the normal force. So if we can work that out, then we have FN. Right. So we know that this angle here is 35 degrees. And we know that this here is MG. Okay. So let's rewrite this thing now. We've got 4320. 4320 equals. And to simplify things, I'm just going to put these in, in the calculator already. So we've got 60 times 9.8 times 2.5 which is 1,470, so it's 1,470, plus half times 60 is 30 VF squared, plus the force of friction. The force of friction is mu kfn, which is going to be the mass times the gravity, okay, which is, then it's going to be, this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse so if we look over here at the top that is going to be cos so it's going to be mg cos of the angle which is 35 degrees times by our mu k which in this case is 0, 0, 8 times by the displacement which is 4, 3, 6. I hope you're following that this is F, F delta X, okay, force of friction times delta X, the delta X we worked at over here is 4.36 meters, and now the force of friction is mu K times the normal force, so this is here is Fn times the mu K, right, so now that is equal to 1470 plus the VF squared plus the M is 60 times 9.8 times cos of 35 degrees times 0 0.08 times 4.36 and that gives you 168 so that becomes 168 and that's 4,320. So now all we have to do is solve for our VF squared. All we have to do is solve for that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these and take them across to the other side. So we're going to subtract. So we're going to go 4320 minus 1470 minus 168. And that gives you 2682. So we've got 2682 is equal to 30 vf squared. So let's solve for vf squared. What are we going to do? We're going to divide both sides by 30. So if we divide that by 30, we get 89.4. So that's equal to 89,4. But we want the square root of that. So we square root it. And we get 9.46. So the final velocity of the skier at the top of the slope is 9,46 meters per second. And please note they've asked for the final speed, but if they'd asked for the final velocity, you would have had to say forwards or in the same direction. You would have had to give a direction. And that grade 12 is a nice level 4 question on how to use both the conservation of mechanical energy as well as the work done against the force of friction, in other words, your work energy theorem, to solve a very nice question that is a typical exam question. So please, grade 12s, go practice this, go do the question by yourselves, make sure you understand, and then go do the questions in the assessment in the turnable system. Have a great day.